Welcome to the best of the best teen Christian shows in history. It's Teen Gospel Live. I'm Oami and this is Lindo. So the question for today is, do teens participate in small-scale corruption? Well, Lindo, I don't have an answer for now. We're going to get to the answer in today's episode. We have SAPS officer Ndivu Medal to answer all our questions. So don't forget to hit us up on our social platforms using the hashtag, hashtag TGL on SID. Right now though, it's time for us to start the show with a musical performance from Ushane Bebe. Hope you guys enjoy. Shane, for that beautiful performance, we'll definitely be chatting to him a little bit later about it. Now, Linda, today we are all about small-scale corruption. Yeah, well, and we ask the question, do teenagers take part 
in small-scale corruption. Today, we are joined by the South African Police Service in studio. Welcome to Team Gospel Life, guys. <laughs> Thanks for having us. So, first question is, what is the duty of the SAPS um, as far as corruption is concerned? Uh, the duty for SAPS is to investigate uh, these type of crimes that happen. Let's say, for example, uh, shoplifting occurred at shop right, and then we go there, uh, communicate with the people there, and then thereafter we'll open a case docket. But before we open the case docket, we'll investigate and just to find out, let's say, the age of the person and everything, like actually what happened there, yeah. you see. And then if it happens that maybe the person is a minor, then, you know, arrest is the last resort, you know. Sure. It's better that we educate uh, that child and then we can go to the parent's place and inform them about what happened there. Yeah. But then if it's an adult, then we can follow the, the formal steps and arrest the person, so on and so on. Okay, thank you. So you said that if it's, um, a, like you find that it's a teenager or a child, yes. you speak to them. What are some of the causes that you see in teenagers and children that make them actually participate in small-scale corruption? Okay, most of the time you might find that it might be the financial stability at home. You are living in a place like Deep Sloots where there is poverty. And then you might find that in that, you might find that when you go to school and then you incur other things, your friends are wearing Adidas, they're wearing Nike toes, and then you don't have that. And then you find that mm -hmm. most of the time, the children, most of the time, they're, they're fighting over a silly thing like a hat. Sure. You wanted a hat, you don't have it, then you go and bully someone, and then you take their hat. And then all of a sudden, now it's not an issue about you and me, but now my family, my brothers, my other schoolmates are getting involved and now it it's just escalating to a big blown thing mm. and then it, it end up getting out of hand. And then other things you might find, like if you look at poverty, it's also related into it's also related into unemployment itself. It's playing a role in that itself. And yeah. then at the same time, there's fear. Like I said, if you're already involved in gangsters, meaning you're fearing for your own life, meaning you have to find some way of ensuring that you are safe at all times. Yeah, we end up having boundaries whereby you're saying, if I'm staying in extension two, then your gang cannot come into my extension okay. because you're not part of this drop. You're part of drop A, so you step the side. If you come the side, we're going to chase you and chase after you. And chasing doesn't only end there, but you end up in committing other crimes as well. So it always escalates into something yeah. else. Yeah. So it starts and just to, just to add on what she said, yeah. um, in other instances, kids are used by el elderly people. Yeah. To, to be sent maybe for shoplifting and other stuff. Go and snatch a gadget from someone who's walking in the street and hand it over to someone or a, a bigger gang or a, an elderly person who is part of a bigger gang mm. within the community. So those are some of the causes. So if you do happen to find teens that are actually participating in this corruption, is there rehabilitation centers that you take them to? And if you do, do they work? Like what kind of, do they, do they help these teens to stop corruption? Yeah, look, in South Africa, we've got uh, diversion programs. And basically, these diversion programs are just there to divert you from going, let's say, the formal route to the courts. It takes you to programs that can help find the root cause of, let's say, what, what led you to commit those type of crimes. Yeah. Yeah. And then from there on, they can give you the necessary counseling and treatment. Let's say someone, as we were saying, was caught uh, for shoplifting, right? Mm. And instead of the person going to court, we can go to uh, a youth program right, and help educate them and use them um, also to educate other people out there that, look, crime doesn't pay, you understand? I was caught doing this and that, you understand? And the reasons for this, as you're speaking about the causes of uh, corruption, mm -hmm. some it's poverty, then you find that uh, you can help this child by helping the family with uh, giving them food mm -hmm. and everything yeah. that they need at home. Mm -hmm. And then by then we prevented crime, you understand? So mm -hmm. it does work. Yeah. But just to, to, to add on what he said, within the South African Police Services, we have a structure, or rather two structures. One is Women's Network. It is led by women. The other one is Men for Change, and it's led by men. But they don't work in silos, they work together. The primary purpose for the existence of these structures is to bridge the gap between the community and the police. Now, in what he said, when we investigate and find that, the root cause of corruption was poverty. We then activate the two structures. We run around and get sponsorships or donations from within ourselves, the police, to make sure that those families that are disadvantaged or underprivileged, 
they are fed for a month or two. Or we even go and establish a vegetable garden to ensure that we don't have to pop out every now and then, but they can depend on uh, their own gardens. Then they tend to their gardens and then they can eat and feed their families from those gardens. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you give to teens participating in, in such communal activities? Well, <clears throat> it, uh, before we get to the teens, it is the parents' responsibility yes, sure. to ensure that they train up their children in the way they should go. There's a biblical text that says that. Yeah. Train up a child in a way they should go so that whenever he's old, he will not depart from it. Now, the, the parent has got a responsibility to instill good values, right? Good morals, and teach them on how to go. Go on God's errands. If you are a pathfinder, you would know. Yeah. There's something that mm -hmm. speaks to that. But then, I will stick to the Bible now. There's a scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. I like the scripture. It says, Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good moral. So basically, we didn't touch much on, 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 on the influence of, of, of uh, bad company, but peer also pressure. peer pressure. Peer pressure from yes. the peers. There's a yes. very big contribution of peer pressure. You've got a Versace shirt I do not have. So for me to, up to, to, to adjust to your standard, I have to, uh, to resort to means of getting the shirt that you have. Mm. Now, the advice that I would give uh, uh, the teenagers is that they should be content with what they have. Understand your background and don't live in competition because life is not a competition. Mm. Everyone, we, we have our own destiny and we have to dig deep into our potentials and realize them one day. So bad company corrupts good morals. Stick to your morals that are instilled by your parents, by your church, and there's nothing that will ever come uh, in your way or you will never find yourself in the wrong side of the law. Mm -hmm. yeah. So keep good company around you and good company will lead you to a righteous and more Christian-like uh, uh, lifestyle. Thank you so much. Thank you to you guys for coming through on our show. I hope you guys learned a lot. Don't be deceived, guys. Bad company corrupts good character. And there are consequences to small-scale corruption. Right now, though, it's time for us to take a break. Let us know what you think about today's topic on our social media platforms. We'll be right back. <laughs> All of these and more on SID Media TV. Welcome back to Teen Gospel Live. It's that time of the show where we get to interact with you guys on our social platforms asking the question, do teens participate in small scale corruption? And this is what you guys have to say on our platforms. Oh, Blessing said, yes, they do. As teens, selling drugs is a form of corruption. Omendi said, yes, they fake school reports. Oh, guys, so you guys fake, you fake school reports. Hey, you guys are heavy, man. I, 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 you guys are heavy. But now it's time for us to go and check out what we have on Career Tip. Let's go. Hi, my name is Martin Lubaya. I am from Pretoria in Hartfield. Okay. My occupation is video editing as well as camera operating. Um, I've been in this field for, for five years. Um, I've also been at Sydney for now five years. Um, and I started this uh, this career at said Media. Well, I come to work in the morning. I report to my desk, check what's outstanding in terms of the programs that's being edited, check on my editors if they're editing, 
and how far they, they are with the editing and also see what they need in terms of the graphics and also anything that they need in terms of the inserts make sure they have that for, for, for the deadline that they have to meet check on current production that are in pre-production check what needs to be done in terms of setup camera work in terms of preparing the cards for the recording and as well as, well as setting up the, the VT which is the mixing room where we mix the, our shows um, see that everything is prepared Make sure everything is ready for the production that's coming up again. For me, well, I took drama, art, and IT. That helped me to get into varsity. Not just that, I had to also pass those subjects with a, not a diploma, but a degree. Well, some of the universities that I applied to was UCT, that's the uh, University of Cape Town, uh, City University, uh, AFDA, and also there's an, a university in Canada, which is Vancouver University, specializes in VFX, which is visual effects, as well as becoming a camera operator or video editor. Um, those are some of the universities that I applied to. That was an amazing career journey. I hope you guys learned as much as I did. Now Proverbs 6 verse 16 verse 3 tells us to commit our work to the Lord and our plans will be established. This teaches us that we should always pray about the career that we choose for our future. Right now though, it's time for us to take a break. When we return, we'll be talking more about today's topic. <laughs> Coming up on the next episode of Teen Gospel Live. We ask the question, is it okay to be social media dependent? Normally with, with um, social media, you turn to it because you feel like, okay, I'm alone, there's people here, let me turn to it. We also get music from Iabena. And we have some physical videos with our guests. <laughs> Catch Teen Gospel Live on Hope Channel or on SID Media Digital on YouTube. Don't, Don't miss it! it. Welcome back guys, if you've just joined us today we are talking about small scale corruption. Now the question of the day is why do teams participate in small scale corruption? Make sure you guys let us know what your thoughts are on our social media platforms using the hashtag, hashtag TGL on SID. Right now though, it's time for us to get into my favorite part of the show, the game. So the game for today is quite simple, my gang. You've seen it happen before. It's called Guess Who's On The Screen. Both our contestants will only get 30 seconds to look at the pictures and name who they saw. It's quite simple. It's quite simple. Owami, I'll let you take this one. I'll let you take this one first. Are you and ready? Let, let's yeah, see. Are you prepared? Do you want to shake it off? Okay, I'm ready. Can I have 30 seconds? Okay. I'm gonna count you down there. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna, in three, I'll give you 10 seconds to guess and then I'll take the paper back. Um, 10, you can guess now. 10, you can open in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you tell me who you saw? No. <laughs> Just what you remember. What I remember? Yes. Ghost face. Yes. Um, <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Echo, or was it Echo? Yeah, echoes, echoes, echoes. Okay, Echoes of Mercy, so I'm going to give okay. that one to you too. No. Um, uh, not uh, 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 so you only got that. two. Whoa, whoa, whoa. She got echo. two. Nah. She got, she, she got the echoes. No, she, she, she said echo, echo, but echo what? She got the no. echoes. I don't uh, care. Uh, uh, wait, can't count wait can, we get, can we get 30 seconds for our well, team? Show them. No? Oh, <laughs> can we get 30 seconds? Cool. In three, two, one, go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 10, 10, 9, 9 8. Up. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, three, two, one. Two, ah, one go. Let's go. First one. Reality seven. Yes. Vocal cord. Okay. Uh -huh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, girls. Crystalline. Yes. Crystalline. Yes. Uh, Jody Taylor. Yes. Yes. Four. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like four. 
Oh, one more. No. One more. No, 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 no. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. No, man. No. 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 It crossed my mind, man. I got five. Five. We still won. <laughs> we still won. Unfortunately, they take this one. I tried. So Even after you tried one. cheating. I tried. I tried. So. <laughs> They try cheating. They try cheating, but I saw that. I'm gonna ask you to spin the wheel, just spin the gray, the gray arrow, and then that's how you pass it. Land. I hope, shame. I hope it lands on cream. Lemon uh, cream. Uh, cream. 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 Like, peanut butter. Like, peanut butter. Cream is like a reward. You know, it's like a reward for over nah. hundred. Cause I saw what you tried. Nah, let's. You let's, did let's your best. Lemon juice. <laughs> It's lemon juice. 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 Okay, I'm gonna count you down eh? and I'm gonna cheer you on. Three, two, one, go. Go, go, go. go Let's go. go, go. You Lemon did it. juice. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. Go. Lemon yes, juice. Yes, let's go. All of it. All of it. All of it. All of it. Refreshing lemon juice. All of it. I'm a short. <laughs> let's, let's go with the lemon and juice. Up for life. <laughs> What well done, man? <laughs> it's not it's out. It's not out, not coming out, guys. The scene goes for life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Wow. Wow, she just she absorbs that. We're going to check out what you guys are saying about today's topic over in our live chat. We asked the question, do teens participate in small-scale corruption? And this is what you guys had to say on our social platforms. Uspa Mandla said, yes, a lot. Take gangsterism, for example. It was in Davidson, where with the OVL saga, it was young kids from the ages of 9 to 29 participating. They would rob and steal from their family and community. We really love hearing from you guys, so keep your comments coming in. Right now, though, it's time for us to head over to our music stage. Joining us in the building at this moment is Shane. Welcome to Team Gospel Live, Shane. Thank you very much. So the question of the day is, do teens participate in small-scale corruption? Um, yes, I do think so, because... Um, to this day, um, teens have a way of getting a lot of peer pressure. And peer pressure is a really big thing to us these days. Yeah. So I do think so. Okay, so I want to know when did you start singing and why did you start singing? Um, I started singing at the, officially at the age of six um, because I fell in love with music at a very, very young age. And music gives my family and I, comfort, peace, and joy. So it has been a great sport to me. So since you, you've you loved music from a young age, and you're a singer now, so who influences your music? I could say my dad and my sister. Yeah. Um, they are always supportive of um, my music and my singing. They're always there, and also just having a general relationship with God, teaching me who God is and yes, all that. I think that's beautiful. I don't know, tell us a little bit about the song that you'll be performing and why you chose that particular song. Um, I'll be singing As the Deer. Um, this song to me means that um, um, whatever we go through, um, God is there and he he's the only one that can give us what we need, mostly yeah. at this point in time. Okay, and how can we use gospel music to reach out to our peers? Um, I think that it starts by just the small things. Um, either um, us as teens, we are very exposed to um, media and gadgets and all that. So it starts by just sending a um, music video or uh, a song to yep. a friend and 
that can go a long way. Okay. Thank you so much for coming through to our show, ladies and gentlemen. That was Shay. <laughs>